Welcome to another Three Steps to Sketch. Today we'll use the advanced method for tangent graphs so that we can graph a tangent equation that has shifts. So we'll look at y equals 1 half tangent of 3x plus pi over 4 minus 2. And so notice we can be sure of the shifts because we see the plus pi over 4 here and the minus 2. So those are your flags for hey, use the advanced method so that you can handle shifts. All right, so here's our method outline and a grid with our equation. Now let's notice our equation is in the form y equals a tangent of bx minus c plus d. If you wanted to, you could factor out that b term so that you could clearly see the phase shift or horizontal shift just by looking at the equation, um, but we'll work with it as it is um, for this particular equation. All right, so let's start with step one. We'll find the essentials, starting first by breaking down what will be part of our base graph for our base pattern in step two. So we have a, which is the coefficient of tangent, which is one half. Okay, so this value will actually help us with the y coordinates of our curve shaping points. It's a vertical shrink from our parent graph, y equals tangent x. So it'll be vertically compressed down. Okay, and then we can find b, which is the coefficient of x. So in that case, in this case, it's three. So it tells us first that we'll have three cycles of tangent between zero and pi for this equation. And we also can use it to help us find the period. So we'll do that for tangent pi divided by b will get us the period, so pi divided by 3 is our period here. And remember, period is just the length of one horizontal cycle. All right, so now we can choose how to label our scale, or our axes, we'll choose the scale. And so we do this very intentionally for the horizontal axis. Take the period and divide by 4, and this ensures that our base pattern in step two will align nicely with our horizontal tick marks. So we have pi over three divided by four. That's the same thing as multiplying by one fourth, if you feel like that's easier to work with. So we'll be counting by pi over 12 to label our horizontal tick marks. And for our vertical scale, we'll simply count by ones. So let's go ahead and label our axes. Horizontally, we're counting one pi over 12, two pi over 12, which reduces to pi over 6, 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4, 4 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 3. All right, we have 5 pi over 12, 6 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 2, 7 pi over 12, and 8 pi over 12 reduces to 2 pi over 3. So I'm going to pause label the negative side of this horizontal axis, all the same values, just negatives. So if you're following along, pause and take a moment to do the same. Okay, so here's how the negative side of the axis looks. And now we can label our vertical axis counting by ones. So easy enough. All right, so that's all the setup for the basics. Let's move on to identifying the shifts, which we'll use in step three. So our shift, um, for our horizontal shift is called a phase shift. And we have to be really careful calculating this. We take C and divide by B. Now, before we do that, notice that our equation, our, our general form equation, has BX minus C. So for a plus to appear in our particular equation, we must have it as 3X minus negative pi over 4. So our c is actually negative pi over 4. Our horizontal or phase shift is going to be to the left. Okay, so let's find that now. We have negative pi over 4 is c, and we're dividing by b, which is 3. So that dividing by 3 is the same thing as multiplying by 1 third. And we see that we should be moving left pi over 12. Okay, or our phase shift is negative pi over 12. And that'll be equal to one horizontal grid unit with how we've labeled our graph. Okay, now D is a little bit easier to find. All you have to do is look at the end of the equation. We see the minus two. 
So D is negative two, which means we'll be moving down two. If it helps you to write left here and down, um, do that. It's always nice to have little reminders for yourself. Okay, finally, let's find the asymptotes equation so that we feel very confident when we're graphing our final graph in step three that we are having all our points and all our asymptotes in the correct place. So the asymptotes equation is a really neat thing that will allow you to find every asymptote of your tangent graph, and it's simply represented by one equation. So there's a nice, easy trick to doing this. All you have to do is take the inputs of your tangent function, so those are your horizontal transformations, set them equal to your parent asymptotes of the graph y equals tangent x. So that's pi over two plus pi k. Okay, so let's write that out. We'll do a little scratch work here. So we have three x plus pi over four. And we're setting that equal to pi over two plus pi k. Now k is simply your variable that's allowing you to substitute in different integers to generate particular asymptotes, specific asymptotes for your graph. So you can let k be negative one, zero, one, any integer, and it'll generate, depending on what you plugged in, a different asymptote along your graph. All right, so once you have this set up, all you have to do is solve for x. So let's start first by subtracting pi over four from both sides. So of course that leaves three x on the left side. And when we subtract pi over four from the right side, Note that the pi k term is not a like term, so it will just stay as it is. And really, we just have pi over 2 minus pi over 4. If you need to rewrite that with a common denominator, you can. So we have 2 pi over 4 minus pi over 4. So we have 1 pi over 4, and the pi plus pi k stays as is. All right, now we just need to divide both sides of the equation by 3. That will isolate our x. And remember when you do divide, make sure you divide every term by three. So that's like times three there. Let's make sure that's clear. Times one third. Same thing as dividing by three and divide by three. All right, so let's write that in our asymptotes equation. We have x equals pi over 12 plus pi over three k. So when you get your final asymptotes equation, the plus something k term should always be plus your period k, and ours is, so we should feel confident about that. And let's go ahead and just predict a few of the asymptotes. Um, we'll just talk through them. If you let k equals zero, we know that our final graph should have an asymptote at pi over 12, just by simplifying when we substitute k as zero. Um, if you let k be one, okay, we would get pi over 12 plus pi over three we know pi over three is like four pi over 12. So we would expect another asymptote a period later, um, which would be at five pi over 12. If you did k is negative one, we would end up with minus four pi over 12. So we should expect another at negative three pi over 12, or if you simplify that, that's at negative pi over four. So it's just nice to know where to expect your asymptotes for the final graph. And then you can feel confident that your final sketch is going to be accurate. Okay, the tough part's done. We've done all the analysis. We've organized all our facts, all our information. We're ready to move on to step two, where we will lightly plot the base pattern. So this is going to be our unshifted graph. So either mark lightly with your pencil or use a different color. So I'll use a light blue for this graph. And our base pattern of tangent will be x-intercept, curve shaping point, asymptote, curve shaping point. All right, so let's start at the origin, mark lightly or with your different color. We have a point on the origin. Our curve shaping point will happen at our first horizontal tick mark and its Y coordinate will be the value of A, so one half. Remember, we have a vertical compression going on here. All right, lightly mark at the next horizontal tick mark, an asymptote. And then at the third horizontal tick mark, working away from the origin, you should have your final curve shaping point, and this time your y coordinate will be the opposite value of a, so negative one half. All right, let's close out this cycle of the graph by plotting our first point in the next cycle. We'd have another x-intercept at pi over three. Okay, so here is one cycle of our base pattern graph. So this is without the shifts. 
And now we're ready for step three, where we shift, sketch, and repeat. So switch to the color that you're going to use for your final graph. I'll be using green. Um, or if you're just marking lightly versus dark, make sure to mark these points very dark. This will be your final graph. It'll be your first cycle. So working from your intermediate graph, working from the light blue points, all we have to do is apply our shifts. So we'll be moving left pi over 12 or one horizontal grid mark, and we'll also move down two, two vertical grid marks. And we can do both of those probably at the same time. So starting with the point at the origin, move left pi over 12 and down two. All right, our first curve shaping point that was at pi over 12 comma one half, we'll be moving it left pi over two, excuse me, left pi over 12 and down one, two. All right, our asymptote will move left pi over 12, shifting it down two does not affect its location. Okay. And then our curve shaping point moves left pi over 12, down two. And our first point in the next cycle, that's at pi over three on the x-axis, moves left pi over 12 and down two. All right, so we can sketch in the tangent curve for this final shifted graph. So this is one cycle of our equation. If you want to erase your intermediate marks, you definitely can do that. Clean up the graph a little bit just so there's no confusion. All right, and now I'm going to switch to purple and we will repeat. So all you have to do is copy the green pattern, your final pattern, over and over and over again to get as many cycles as you'd like. Okay, so working to the right first, we have what was an x-intercept. Now we could call it maybe um, a midline point. Um, we have a curve shaping point. We have another asymptote. We should feel really great seeing it's at five pi over 12. We talked about that with the asymptotes equation earlier. Another curve shaping point, another midline point, and another curve shaping point. So sketch that in, got some nice tangent curves and we can work the other direction as well. So we're just copying the pattern. There is that asymptote that we predicted using our asymptotes equation at negative pi over four. Okay, repeat this pattern just a little bit more. We see there's another asymptote at negative seven pi over 12. And hopefully you're predicting that if you substituted in negative two for K, you would um, be able to simplify to get negative 7 pi over 12. All right, so let's sketch this in. We have several great cycles of tangent here. Um, before we finish, let's go back to B. We said B was 3 and that we would have 3 cycles of our graph happening between 0 and pi. And now we don't quite have all the way out to pi, but hopefully you can see here we have close to our three cycles. If we went again, um, hopefully you can see, or if you want to experiment with that, that's a neat thing to see to further confirm your graph and double check all your work. Okay, so this was the three steps to sketch advanced method for shifted tangent graphs. Uh, hopefully this helped you feel a lot more confident getting a, a graph that's uh, relatively challenging. Um, and hopefully it also helps you understand the asymptotes equation. Um, I'll post some links in the video description that go into more detail about the asymptotes equation um, that link to more examples of tangent and even some to um, some of the other trick functions. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.